So hello friends, this is Jairaj from Government Women's Polytechnic Holayana Sipura welcoming you all to this fifth session of Unit 4 of Hydraulics and Pneumatics that is Hydraulics Machines. So in our last class we were discussing centrifugal pumps and we had discussed in detail about the construction and working of centrifugal pump and we have few terminologies left in this centrifugal pump discussion which we will be continuing it today so before uh, moving on to the terminologies of centrifugal pump we will be looking into a brief recap of previous session and later we'll be moving on our discussion to send terminologies of centrifugal pump and we'll be working out a simple work example on centrifugal pump also later we'll be shifting our discussion to a classification the next uh, type of uh, pump that is the positive displacement pipe pump so one uh, important type of uh, positive displacement pump that is the reciprocating pump we'll be focusing our discussion uh, on the reciprocating pump we'll be seeing the working principle and construction of reciprocating pump we'll be looking into various terminologies uh, in order to find out the efficiency discharge etc of the reciprocating pump and we'll be working out a few work examples in order to complete the chapter on pumps so in our last class we discussed centrifugal pump so the basic principle that lies behind a centrifugal pump that we have seen so the basic principle here is the centrifugal force so we have the impeller in a pump so which has the radially curved vanes radially backward curved vanes so the water enters them along the axis of the shaft and passes through the blades and it is thrown away by the centrifugal force the rotation this is the direction of rotation of the impeller the water gliding through or passing through this blades will be thrown out by the blades at certain velocity so because this water particles acquires a centrifugal force so which are received by the casing so different types of casing we have seen in our last class itself a simplest type is the volute casing which is of continuously increasing cross-sectional area so the area of the cross-section continuously or gradually increases in order to increase the pressure of the water that is being pumped so the water continuously coming out from the impellers reach the casing and finally the pressure of the water gets increased by this volute casing all the velocity energy is just converted into pressure energy and leaves the pump into the delivery line at higher pressure so this was the fundamental concept behind the centrifugal pump and let us try to extend the discussion on centrifugal pump we had learned a few terminologies in our last class let us say this is the suction pipe so we had learned that this is the sump from which water is being pumped so this is the eye of the impeller or the center point of this impeller through which the water enters see the distance between the surface of the water from the sump to the center of the pump was called as the static head or suction head it is called as so next the delivery head that is the distance from the center point of the pump to the level of water in the tank suppose uh, the water is being pumped into the tank so this is the level of water in the tank so up to the, the distance till here is called as the delivery head see both combined together was called as the static head so this was called as the static head so combi combination of the suction head and the delivery head was called as the static head and we discussed the monometric head so which had monometric head which had all which is what which was the combination of all the heads so the work that has to be done by a pump in order to complete its task that is i want to supply water from the sump till the tank so what are all the heads that a pump has to supply in order to do this work do the work satisfactorily that is called as the monometric head it has the suction head plus delivery head plus the losses losses when we say losses the losses that occur in the suction side as well as in the delivery side maybe it may be a frictional losses or because of the bends etc so those losses 
and the velocity component that is the velocity with which the water has to be supplied so that also will be taken care by this monometric head this is the total head that the pump has to supply in order to satisfy its requirement so that was called as the monometric head so let us move on to various efficiencies that the that are associated with the centrifugal pump see the first of the efficiencies that is associated with the centrifugal pump is the monometric efficiency so the monometric efficiency we know we have understood the monometric head first of all the monometric head is nothing but the ratio of the monometric head over the head imparted by the impeller to the water Mon that is the monometric efficiency it is defined as the ratio of the monometric head over head imparted by the impeller to the water so we know what is the monometric head it is given by the capital hm so that is the monometric head head imparted by the impeller to the water is nothing but the work done by the impeller on the water so whose equation we already had learned it is a product of the virial velocity and the tangential velocity of the impeller over the acceleration due to gravity we have sent it to the numerator so this is nothing but the head imparted by the impeller to the water or work done by the impeller to the water so the monometric efficiency is defined as the ratio of monometric head over the work done by the impeller on water so that is given by this equation so this equation has been reduced in order to get this equation so using this equation we'll be able to find out the monometric efficiency the next form of efficiency is the mechanical efficiency since much of the mechanical components are much of the components are of mechanical in nature so there is an efficiency associated called as mechanical efficiency so wherein the losses may be occurring because of friction or various other reasons that deviates from the theoretical power that can be given to the water so mechanical efficiency is defined as the ratio of power at the impeller over the power at the shaft so it is say suppose this is the pump so the power that is inputted to this pump is the power at the shaft that is given by the motor so the numerator is power at the impeller that is the power that is being given to the impeller so r that is the work done by the impeller on the water both are same power at the impeller is nothing but work done by the impeller on water so which is given by this equation vw to virial velocity at the exit into multiplied by the tangential velocity of the impeller over the acceleration due to gravity G w is nothing but the specific weight of the water so divided by the shaft power that is the input power to the shaft the power that has been supplied to the shaft is called as the shaft power so this is the mechanical efficiency uh -huh. equation so the derivation part we will not be looking at so this is the simplest expression which we can use it in order to solve few numericals and then finally we have the overall efficiency overall efficiency is nothing but the combination of the mechanical efficiency and the monometric efficiency it can be also defined as the product of mechanical efficiency and the hydro uh, uh, monometric efficiency so overall efficiency is defined as the power output of the pump divided by the power that has been supplied into the pump so power that has been supplied into the pump is nothing but the power at the shaft power that is given to the shaft so next the numerator is power output of the pump the power output of the pump we already know it is nothing but the monometric head so power output final power output that we are getting from the pump is the monometric head so this monometric head divided by the shaft power that is the basic input power that we are giving to the shaft so when this is solved we'll get the efficiency known as the overall efficiency overall efficiency is also given by the product of monometric efficiency and mechanical efficiency man is monometric efficiency and nm is the mechanical efficiency so that will give us the overall efficiency let us look at a simple work for example the internal and external diameter of the impeller of a centrifugal pump are 200 mm and 400 mm so we had learned that the impeller has two diameters see impeller has blades on it So the inner portion diameter is the D1, the outer portion diameter is D2. So that has been given in the problem. The internal and external diameter of the impeller of a centrifugal pump is 200 mm and 400 mm. So which we have to convert it into 
meters respectively the pump is running at rpm n is equal to 1200 rpm the vane angles of the impeller at inlet and outlet are 20 and 30 degrees respectively the vane angles of the impeller at inlet and outlet so what this means the vane angle is nothing but the blade angle the vane angle at the inlet and outlets are nothing but theta and phi so we had learned the angle theta and phi is nothing but the angle made by the relative velocity at the inlet and the angle made by the relative velocity at the outlet. So phi is the angle made by the relative velocity at the exit and theta is the angle made by the relative velocity at the inlet. So they are called as the vane angles. So theta is the vane angle at the inlet that is 20 degree. So and phi is the vane angle at the outlet that is 30 degrees respectively the water enters the impeller radially so when we see this term radially so when we say the word radially so we it means to say that alpha is equal to 90 degree alpha is 90 degree means the absolute component of the velocity v1 is perpendicular it is perpendicular so when we say this is perpendicular v1 is equal to v f1 velocity of the flow at the inlet so just because there is no horizontal component or there is no component of absolute velocity along the direction of motion so vw1 will be equal to zero so when we say the flow is entering radially so it means so much it gives us so much of information when the water enters impeller radially alpha is equal to 90 degrees so when alpha is 90 degree v1 will be equal to vf1 and the com component of the virl vw1 will be equal to zero so this is our observation from this word radially and the velocity of the flow is constant so determine the work done by the impeller per unit weight of the water so we have to find out the work done by the impeller per unit weight of water so work done by the impeller was we understood the equation so work done is given by the equation vw1 sorry vw2 into u2 divided by g so this was the equation in order to find out the work done by the impeller per unit weight of the water so we have to find out the virl velocity at the exit and the tangential velocity of the impeller u2 then we'll be able to find out the work done by the impeller so given are the diameters uh, d1 in uh, internal diameter of the impeller is 0.2 meters d2 outside diameter is 0.4 meters 400 mm has been reduced to 0.4 meters so n speed of the impeller is 1200 rpm so inlet angle that is inlet vane angle theta is 20 degree phi is 30 degree so alpha is 90 degree ju just because the water is entering radially so next v1 vw1 virl velocity at inlet is zero so we have already discussed this now so for an a centrifugal pump velocity of the flow at the inlet will be equal to velocity of the flow at the exit vf1 equal to vf2 so this is the typical velocity triangle for this condition so here we are able to see v1 is entering radially so the water is entering radially because alpha is equal to 90 degree so water enters radially means alpha is 90 degree here we are able v1 is perfectly vertical when v1 is completely vertical it will not have any horizontal component so that is vw1 will be definitely equal to zero so it will not have any horizontal component and also the vertical component vf1 of v1 both are equal because v1 is already vertical it is at 90 degree hence it is equal to vf1 and we know that relative velocity component at an angle theta so theta is given the theta is 20 degrees and at the outlet this is the velocity triangle we are seeing so the relative velocity at an angle phi which is given as 30 degree so vf2 and all other things will be able to find out so here we have the velocity at the exit absolute velocity at the exit v2 at an angle beta so next we have the relative velocity at an angle phi so with the tangential speed at the exit and the viral velocity at the outlet so we have to find out this viral velocity at the exit and the tangential velocity at the of the impeller at the exit so after finding these two we'll be able to find out the work done by the impeller
so we have u1 u1 was given by the formula pi d1 into n by 60 so pi d1 into n divided by 60 so d1 was 0.2 meters so speed of the impeller was 1200 rpm so after calculation we are obtaining u1 as 12.56 meters per second so formula for u2 is pi d2 into n divided by 60 so d2 was given in the problem it is 4 meters multiplied by the revolution 1200 rpm will give us the speed u2 at the exit as 25.13 meters per second so we know tan theta is equal to vf1 by u1 so here we are able to find out from the inlet conditions so applying tan theta here so applying tan theta so we are getting vf1 divided by u1 so that is opposite by adjacent side. So Vf1 divided by adjacent is U1. So we know the value of theta. So we have to find out the value of Vf1 here. We know U1 from this calculation. We know theta. We have to find out the value of velocity flow at the inlet. So, so re realigning this equation vf1 equal to u1 into tan theta so we know the value of u1 and tan theta so u1 is 12.56 tan 20 degree so after calculation we are obtaining vf1 as 4.57 meters per second and in centrifugal pump we know the condition velocity of the flow at the inlet is equal to velocity of the flow at the exit so vf1 and vf2 are one and the same so now by calculating vf1 i am able to say what is vf2 so vf2 i know vf2 here i know the angle phi so i know the value of u2 so then i will be able to find out what is vw2 which i am interested in so for this i need to find out this side distance that is let us say x or whatever so applying tan phi here once again applying tan function i will be able to find out vf2 and this value of x so after finding this value of x i will be able to subtract this from the value of u2 in order to obtain the viral velocity at the exit so applying tan phi at the exit side so tan phi is equal to opposite by adjacent side so i represented this as x or simply i can write u2 minus vw2 so this is represented by u2 minus vw2 so u2 nalli nanu vw2 na minus madidre nanu ee distance sigutte so applying tan phi opposite by adjacent side opposite is vf2 vf2 nanu gottu vf2 was equal to vf1 so i know the value of phi as 30 degrees so i can easily find out the distance of this side of the triangle so realigning the equation to find out vf2 so by cross multiplying tan phi into u2 minus vw2 so applying tan function here i'll be able to find out the value of will at the exit that is 17.215 meters per second now i know the value of vw2 and u2 so then i can straight away move to the final equation in order to find out the work done by the impeller on the water per unit weight of water so that is given by equation vw2 into u2 divided by g so applying all the values so i am obtaining the answer as 44.1 newton meter per newton so that is per newton in term because we are finding out the work done per unit weight of the water so this is the answer so next concept is priming so what exactly is priming let us see so priming is a simple process of removing air present in the suction side of the pump so we in the pump we have mainly so let us say this is the pump we have the suction pipe and the delivery pipe so suppose this is suction we are fill we want to remove the air present in this suction side see if this is the eye of the impeller i want to remove the air present in the casing as well as the suction pipe and also part of the delivery pipe let us say up to here i want to remove the air that is present inside so what we do so generally in our day-to-day life we do priming by just filling water inside the pump so we are filling water in order to remove the air so we fill water through the delivery line so in order to fill the complete suction line the complete casing and part of the delivery line with water in order to remove the air but air idre yenu disadvantage so air yake irbardu pump nalli so air na remove maada kelsa ne priming but air yake irbardu see when this pump is completely filled with air let us say 
the pump is completely filled with air so the suction side is the pipe is completely filled with air so i switch on the pump so when the pump starts rotating a low pressure region is created here because the air is completely present in this region this low pressure region is uh, is developed in terms of head of hair head of hair and pressure in terms of hair so ee air ee head of hair anadu thumba kadme irutte so ee thumba kadme iruvantaha ee pressure neerna sump ninda athava tank ninda suck madakke agodilla so because the head developed is in terms of hair which is very very lesser so now en madbeku head developed must be in terms of water so here the pressure head developed must be in terms of water so in adu avaga matrane neerna adu continuous agi pull madakke sadhya so avadakke nav en madtivi we fill the ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಸಕ್ಷನ್ ಲೈನ್ ಈ ಸಕ್ಷನ್ ಲೈನ್ ನ ಮ್ಯಾನುವಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಫಿಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಕೇಸಿಂಗ್ ನ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಆಗಿ ನೀರಿನಿಂದ ಫಿಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಲೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ವಾಟರ್ ದೆನ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ಪಂಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ವಿಚ್ ಆನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ವಾಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸಕ್ಷನ್ ಲೈನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ರೊಟೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಕ್ಷನ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಸಕ್ಕಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಟ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಸೊ ದ ಮೈನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರೀಸನ್ ವೈ ಡೂ ವೈ ವಿ ಡೂ ಪ್ರೈಮಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಎ ಹೆಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪಂಪ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರಿಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಏರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಫಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಸಕ್ಷನ್ ಪೈಪ್ ಕೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಪೈಪ್ ವಿತ್ ವಾಟರ್ ದ ಹೆಡ್ ಜನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಏರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟು ಸಕ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ದ ಹೆಡ್ ಜನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೇರ್ ಸೊ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಸಕ್ ದಿ water from the some hence we have to fill the water fill water completely into the suction line and therefore we are developing the pressure in terms of head of water so thereby the suction takes place very efficiently so if the pump is run with completely air inside for prolonged time so it will lead to overheating and it may lead to damage of the pump so hence priming has to be done so in order to avoid the failure of the pump so next concept is cavitation so cavitation is a phenomenon that occurs in the suction side so when the pressure drops below the vapor pressure so when the pressure in the suction side drops below the vapor pressure so a problem called as a cavitation occurs so what exactly is this cavitation so cavitation is formation of cavities on the blades or inner surface of the casing so cavities are uh, maybe leading to erosion or pitting corrosion so namma casing na ola bhaga athwa impeller na blades galu corrosion inda haalagodu pitting agodu cavities form agodu blade surface galu haalagodane navu cavitation ant heli karithivi so ee cavitation agodu suction side nalli pressure thumba drop aadaga so suction side nalli pressure eshtra mattige drop aadaga vapor pressure na kelage adu drop aadaga so there is a pressure called vapor pressure so let us try to understand what is the vapor pressure so suppose i have Uh, a container filled with water i starts heating it so idanna neerna bisi maartta idange neerna aavi generate agutte so this is a closed container ee ee water particles neer aavi enagutte ee neerna surface mele ne collect agirutte so kelavu time aad mele enagutte ee neerna aavi particles water particles steam particle enagutte condense aagi matte adu neer aagi convert aagi surface jothe serkombidutte so ee neer water particles when they condense back to water they exert pressure ee ella water particles start exerting a pressure on this surface of the water which is called as the vapor pressure so water at this pressure is called as the vapor pressure when nama suction side nalli suppose this is the suction side when the pressure of the water at the suction side falls below the vapor pressure ee vapor pressure ginta kadime aada pressure illi develop aadage enagutte now yavade bisi maado avashyakate ne illa neeru tanninda tane boil agakke shuru madutte water will reach its boiling point at this vapor pressure andre thumba ati kadime aada pressure nalli ee boil aadanta water steam particles ee water particles enagutte at rapid pace comes and hits this blades of the impeller matte ee olava casing nalla enagutte ondu rapid speed nalli bandu adanna hit maadi it collapses it collapses into water particles once again so ee one process nalli enagutte so inner portion of the casing ee casing na ola bhaga blades gal surface enagutte it they start forming cavities haalagakke shuru madutte idane now cavitation ant heli karithivi which must be avoided for a prolonged life of the pump so pump na life time na now jaasti madbekandre we have to avoid this cavitation so in so this has to be completely avoided 
for sufficient lifetime of the pump so water starts boiling forming vapor bubbles so water boil aga shuru madade avaga pressure bandu vapor pressure ginta kadime drop adaga so these bubbles strike the blades with higher velocity and hence forms the cavities on the blades blades mele cavities first sanna sanna cavity galagi form agutte so ee cavity anadu blade gal mele matra alla casing na kuda adu disturb madutave so this leads to corrosion and pitting so corrosion and pitting so form of corrosion so which leads to prolonged corrosion so corrosion matte nillade continuous agi blade matte casing surface galna haal madutte so in order to avoid these things we have to ensure that the vapor the pressure at the suction doesn't fall below the vapor pressure and also the blades and the casing must be designed with suitable corrosion resistance material like aluminium stainless steel etc so next we have the centrifugal uh, pump at multi stages at different stages so when we are not happy with a single impeller we employ two or more impellers which is called as the multi stage centrifugal pump so a multi stage centrifugal pump is used in order to produce a higher head i want a higher pressure and when i want high discharge so under both these conditions we use the centrifugal different at different stages of centrifugal pump so centrifugal centrifugal pump consisting of two or more impeller is called as the multi stage multi stage is done in order to produce a higher head or higher pressure and higher discharge so the reason for not having a larger size uh, impeller see uh, when we want a higher head or higher pressure i can use a larger pump also nanage pressure jaasti bedaga ati dotta sadanta ondu pump na kuda nanu balasabodu but that is not economical and not efficient yake ant helidre larger size of the impeller dotta size anta the impeller ati costly kuda agutte matte blade na nanu ati dotta dagi andre jaasti beyond the 45 degree nanu angle kododakke sadhya illa because it reduces efficiency of the pump and the single impeller can be in practice single impellers are used up to head of 50 meters only 50 meter head ke ma ಅದರನ್ನ ನಾನು ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಇಂಪಲರ್ ಪಂಪ್ ನ ಬಳಸೋಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಐ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ಒಂದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾದಂತಹ ಇಂಪಲರ್ ಗಳನ್ನ ನಾನು ಬಳಸ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತೀನಿ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಹೈ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯರ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಸೋ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಂಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪಂಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ parallel so pumps in series so here in this picture we are able to see pumps two pumps are connected in series so they are mounted on the same shaft one the shaft in that they are deriving power so when pumps are connected in series let us take an example see one pump gets the input from the sump so it raises its pressure it is raising its pressure to certain level let us say let us say 50 heads and then it is giving the delivery into the next inlet of the next pump so one the pump ninda bandanta outlet innond pump ge inlet agi hogta ide so illi 50 heads develop agirodu so next stage na pump nalli enagutte inno higher head ge develop agutte so illi already head jaasti agi 50 m meters ge develop agide next stage nalli it gets developed to higher stage of head maybe let us say 80 meters or so so this is the advantages when by connecting the pumps in series so the overall the final head can be the multiple of uh, the monometric heads of individual head suppose one the pump na uh, maximum head that is monometric head is let us say hm now i have n number of uh, impellers attached in series so n number of impellers ant helidre 10 15 eshto so when i multiply the head of one impeller with the number of impellers totally attached so i'll be getting the total head developed by the pump so in uh, to summarize this so pumps are connected in series in order to obtain higher pressure athwa higher head nange yavaga ati hechada pressure beko avaga nanu pump galna series agi connect maadkoltini so ondra outlet bandu inondike inlet agutte so pressure enagutte duppatta agutte so inno jaasti aagta hogutte so now let us see a diagram a diagram so wherein we are seeing the pumps connected in series so here we have the impeller many number of impellers connected to a common shaft illu now nodabodu so illi one suction line ide one delivery line ide neevu nodabodu so one impeller na outlet enagutte innondu impeller ge inlet agutte so illi now nodta idivi so the manifolds see the outlet manifold of this impeller becomes the inlet for the next pump so idra output illige next ge baruthe third stage ge third stage to fourth stage ge hogutte fourth stage na output bandu fifth stage ge hogi finally it, the, there is a one output coming out from this multi stage centrifugal pumps that is pumps connected in series as the higher pressure so one 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 impeller na kayalli 
ಕೊಡದೆ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಈ ಐದು ಇಂಪೆಲರ್ಗಳು ಒಟ್ಟು ಸೇರಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ಟು ಎ ವೆರಿ ಹೈಯರ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸೊ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಪಂಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಲ್ ಸೊ ಪಂಪ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಲ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ನನಗೆ ಅತಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾದಂತಹ ಫ್ಲೋ ಬೇಕು ಅಂದಾಗ ನಾನು ಪ್ಯಾರಲಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಪಂಪ್ ನ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀನಿ ಸೊ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಅತಿ ಹೆಡ್ ಐಯರ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಬೇಕಾದಾಗ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಸೊ ಪಂಪ್ಸ್ ನ ಪ್ಯಾರಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಯಾವಾಗ ಅತಿಯಾದ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಬೇಕಾದಾಗ ನಂಗೆ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಎ ಲಾರ್ಜರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಸೊ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಮನ್ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಲೈನ್ ಸೊ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಪಂಪ್ ನ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪಂಪ್ ಗೆ ಹೋಗೋದನ್ನ ನೋಡಿದ್ವಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಪಂಪ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಈಚ್ ಇಂಪಲರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೆಪರೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಪ್ರತಿ ಒಂದು ಪಂಪ್ ಕೂಡ ಸಪರೇಟ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಆ ಪ್ರತಿ ಪಂಪ್ ನಿಂದ ಬಂದಂತಹ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಒಂದು ಕಾಮನ್ ಡೆಲಿವರಿ ಲೈನ್ ಗೆ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಈ ಕಾಮನ್ ಲೈನ್ ಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇರುವಂತದ್ದು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಕ್ಯೂ ನ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸೊ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೊ ಈ ಪಂಪ್ ನಿಂದ ಬಂದಂತಹ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಒನ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಸೊ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಹೀಗೆ ಆಡ್ ಆಗಿ ಆಡ್ ಆಗಿ ಸೊ ದ ಓವರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಫೈನಲ್ ಫ್ಲೋ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮೋರ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಇಂಪಲರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒಪ್ಟೈ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಟಿ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಎನ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಎನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಪಲರ್ಸ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ನಾನು ಇಂಪಲರ್ ಗಳನ್ನ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅದರ ಜೊತೆ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಇಂಪಲರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ನ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲೈ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಐ ಬಿ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಫ್ಯೂಗಲ್ ಪಂಪ್ಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಲ್ ಸೊ ಎನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಪೆಲರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರೆಸಿಪ್ರೊಕೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಸೊ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಸೊ ರೆಸಿಪ್ರೊಕೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಕಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಟು ಹೈಡ್ರಾಲಿಕ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ by a piston cylinder arrangement we had seen that reciprocating pump is nothing but a positive confinement pump it has a positive region wherein a fluid is arrested in this region and whose pressure will be increased by movement of wall so here i have a fluid let us say so whose pressure will be increased by this piston cylinder arrangement so this piston pushes this liquid and hence the pressure of this fluid rises by reduction in the volume it comes out at a higher pressure so this is the fundamental concept behind this reciprocating pump mechanical energy is converted into hydraulic energy so by piston cylinder arrangement so used for a small quantity of fluid and larger pressure so in our centrifugal pumps we had seen that the pressure of the centrifugal pump is limited whereas the discharge is very higher in a centrifugal pump whereas in a reciprocating pump the discharge is lower but the pressure is very much higher so this is the concept behind the centri reciprocating pump so under this condition we'll be employing the pump so when we need higher discharge we are employing centrifugal pump when we are requiring higher pressure but lower discharge we can employ a reciprocating pump so reciprocating pump has the following components it has a cylinder with a piston piston rod connecting rod crank suction pipe delivery line etc so let us have a sim look at a simple video so here we have a cylinder and piston attached to piston rod so this is a piston rod attached to a piston within a cylinder arrangement so piston rod is attached to a connecting rod so the connecting rod itself is attached to a crank and a crank shaft so this is rotated by a prime mover it may be a motor or any other arrangement so this is rotated when this crank rotates the connecting rod oscillates in order to move this piston rod inside and outside so when it revolves by one complete revolution there are two strokes happening so one is inside and another one is outside so one is extension another one is called retraction so here we are able to see the inlet pipe and we have the discharge pipe here so when the piston is retracted backwards so here the inlet line is connected to the sump which is called as the water or it may be oil whatever so here we have the inlet valve or suction valve called as and this is the delivery valve so which is we, both are non return valves so
completely so this is called as the suction stroke so now the piston is completely retracted valve open so oil completely fills inside the cylinder so and next during the next stroke see when it rotates by another 180 degree first 180 degree re retraction that is suction stroke next to 180 degree so it will be what extension stroke when the piston extends further it pushes the liquid in order to reduce the volume thereby increase the pressure because of increase in pressure this delivery valve opens up here we are able to see delivery valve opens the liquid in this region at higher pressure discharges into the discharge pipe so this is the concept behind the single acting reciprocating pump so we say single acting reciprocating single acting reciprocating pump because the piston is in contact with only one on its one side with the liquid so here in this uh, block diagram we are able to see the cylinder piston cylinder arrangement with connecting rod attached to a crank so when it uh, revolves see when this crank revolves by 180 degrees see this complete rotation consists of 360 degrees that is a b c d so when it when the crank rotates from let us say from a b to c so when it rotate when it go back to c there is a retraction stroke for 180 degree and when it travels from c to a when it rotates from c to a so there will be extension stroke extension stroke leads to increase of pressure whereby the fluid attained in this region gets pushed to the delivery line so we have all this components attached over here so piston piston rod connecting rod crank etc delivery valve or the suction valve so all these components may makes into the working of single acting reciprocating pump so reciprocating pumps are classified according to action of water as single acting pump and double, double acting reciprocating pump so we'll be seeing what is single acting and the double acting pump are according to number of cylinders so we have single uh, single cylinder pump and the double cylinder pump or we can have triple cylinders also so depending on the requirement we'll have the single cylinder reciprocating pump double reciprocate double cylinder reciprocating pump etc so next according to the existence of air vessels so air vessels are nothing but smaller uh, regions attached at the inlet on uh, mostly most commonly at the exit side of the reciprocating pump in order to ensure that there is lesser amount of pressure variation now suppose let us say this is the delivery line of the reciprocating pump so this is the piston cylinder arrangement so air vessels are attached over here so these are called the air vessels so which has compressed air separated by diaphragm when fluid is supplied at a higher pressure this air vessels takes some amount of pressure thereby reducing the shock or the pressure surge on the delivery side and when there is a uh, pressure variation or when there is a lesser pressure so these air vessels so compensate for loss of pressure by supplying back the higher pressure fluid that is retracted into it so this is the function of the air vessel so with the presence of air vessel we have one kind of reciprocating pump and without the air vessel also we have reciprocating pumps so let us discuss what exactly is the single acting pump so here in this uh, picture we are able to see a single acting reciprocating pump so in simple we can say a single acting pump uh, single acting reciprocating pump comes in contact with fluid on one side of the piston only so this is the keyword here on one side of the piston so here we have the piston so it is coming in contact with the fluid on only one side so this uh, the other side it is not having any contact with the fluid it is completely sealed by the piston rings so it comes to contact with the fluid on only one side so during the 360 degree rotation the half rotation that is 180 degree is the suction stroke and the next 180 degree is the extension or uh, delivery stroke it is called as so this is the suction stroke and this is the delivery stroke so for one complete rotation we have only one delivery so for one complete rotation one delivery in a single acting pump it has one suction and one delivery for 360 degree rotation or one complete rotation of the crankshaft has one suction and one delivery so for one complete revolution of the crank there are two stroke that is one suction and one delivery and one for one complete revolution we have only one delivery stroke so next we have the double acting 
reciprocating pump the as the diagram represent the double acting reciprocating pumps comes in contact with the fluid on both sides of the piston here we have the piston cylinder arrangement connected piston connected to piston rod so here the fluid is in contact with the piston on both sides so here on the piston side as well as on the piston rod side so when the piston rod extends on one side it pushes the fluid into the delivery line on one of the delivery line on the other side it is performing an extension stroke on the left side so it is pulling some fluid into the cylinder parallelly it is doing both extension as well as retraction that is suction as well as delivery when this when this suction side on uh, on the right side when the com delivery is completed again it moves back or it extends pushing the fluid collected on the left side to the delivery line thereby performing a suction stroke on the left side of the pump so thereby doing two work simultaneously it performs delivery at the same time it sucks fluid on the other side of the piston and vice versa it the process completely repeats for one complete revolution of the crank there are four strokes so whereas in a single acting pump we saw there was only two strokes for one complete revolution in double acting pump we have complete four strokes for one complete revolution of the crankshaft so there are two suction and two deliveries so for one complete rotation here the double acting pump performs two delivery strokes so for, for one complete revolution it performs two delivery whereas in a single acting pump there is only one delivery per revolution complete revolution of the crankshaft each stroke has a delivery stroke so let us try to find out the discharge from the reciprocating pump so the discharge depends on the volume uh, the discharge is nothing but the volume flow rate the volume of the fluid discharged is directly depending on the volume of the cylinder so we are more interested in the size or the specifications of the cylinder so a is nothing but the area of cross section of the piston in meter square and l is the length of the piston stroke in meters so area multiplied by length will give the volume of the cylinder so which says the volume of the fluid that is being discharged or volume of the fluid that is being admitted into the cylinder per stroke so n is the speed of the crank in revolutions per minute so r is the radius of the crank so we have q the formula for discharge is l into a into n divided by 60 for a single acting pump so here we have to understand so area multiplied by length that is area of the cylinder when multiplied by length will give the volume of the cylinder so this volume of the cylinder is equal to volume of the fluid that is being sucked inside and that is being delivered simultaneously so this when multiplied by the revolution because the crank is continuously rotating with this when multiplied by the speed so it will give us the discharge the continuous process discharge in meter cubes per second since this is single acting pump we have one delivery per one complete rotation one delivery for 360 degree that is one complete rotation ge. so one the delivery stroke here at the single acting pump nally. so either double acting pump so one the complete rotation ge, delivery here at the. hence the same formula changes to two times l a n divided by 60 so for a double acting pump since it has two delivery stroke so it has two delivery for one complete revolution and the formula gets multiplied by two so the discharge gets doubled up coefficient of discharge so it is defined as actual discharge divided by theoretical discharge so the theoretical discharge we have seen the formula so q equal to l a n divided by 60 for a single acting pump so what is the difference between the uh, theoretical discharge and the actual discharge so actual discharge is not similar to theoretical discharge because of the concept called slip so there occurs slip in many formats so it may appear in the suction as well as during the the performance of the delivery stroke also so the few of the fluid components get slipped away or which may not be carried out into the delivery line and also the cylinder may not be completely filled so it will have certain volumetric efficiency with it uh, 
the volumetric efficiency of the reciprocating pumps are even though higher in the range of 98 and 99 so there are losses wherein the cylinder will not be completely filled with the fluid during the suction stroke so all this leads to the difference between the actual discharge and the theoretical discharge so the ratio of actual discharge to theoretical discharge is called as the coefficient of discharge so the slip we define as very simply so the theoretical discharge yenu discharge aagbekittu but yenu discharge aagta ide ivu eradra madhye iru antarane navu slip anta heli karithivi so slip is the difference between the theoretical discharge and the actual discharge so slip na percentage form nalli express madodadre so slip divided by the theoretical discharge multiplied by 100 will give us the slip in terms of percentage so power required to drive the reciprocating pump so reciprocating pumps na drive madadike what is the power required so power required is rho g h h is nothing but the manometric head yava head ge nanu water na supply madbekagide that is the manometric head h is so it can also be replaced with static head static head is hs plus hd suction head and delivery head yavaga losses namge yenu gottiradilvo so we can have this hs and hd so apart from that h is h represents the monometric head only so power is equal to specific weight multiplied by discharge multiplied by the monometric head of the water gives us the power required to drive a reciprocating pumps in terms of watts so let us have a look at a simple work example a single acting reciprocating pump having a bore of 150 mm diameter and stroke of 300 mm length so here we have the single acting reciprocating pump single a single acting pump on the head right? so one the delivery per one complete revolution one the revolution ge one day delivery stroke right? so size of the cylinder put it so here i have the size of the cylinder so this is the piston and piston rod so the diameter of the cylinder put it there 150 millimeters 150 millimeters is the diameter of the cylinder and the length of the stroke so the length of the stroke the maximum uh, length that a piston can retract or extend so that is called as the length of the stroke that is 300 millimeters or simply 3.3 meters when converted into meter discharges 200 liters of water so it has been given that a single acting pump with certain specification discharges 200 liters of water so when the problem says about the discharge it is nothing but q actual discharge the theoretical discharge we have to find out q actual is equal to 200 liters of water per minute so 200 liters per minute we have to convert it into meter cubes per second so to we have to convert it into meter cubes per second so hence divided by 1000 by 60 so 200 liter pump discharging 200 liters of water per minute at 40 rpm the speed of the pump is given we have to find out calculate the coefficient of discharge cd and the percentage of slip so in order to find out the coefficient of slip and the percentage of slip what i need is i need theoretical discharge and the actual discharge so theoretical discharge we have to calculate but the actual discharge is given in the problem that is 200 liters of water per minute so in order to find out the theoretical discharge i know the formula since it is a single acting pump it is given by L A N divided by 60. So L is the stroke. It is given directly as 300 mm. A is area of cross section of the cylinder. Diameter is given. I can find out the area using the formula pi by 4 d square. And N is the speed of the pump. It is given directly 40 RPM. So with this basic details, I'll be able to find out the discharge, <coughs> discharge, theoretical discharge of the pump. So the given parameters are the diameter of the cylinder that is bore of the cylinder that is 0.15 meters length of the stroke is 0.3 meters mm converted to meters the actual discharge is 0.2 meter cubes per minute so 200 liters uh, per minute of helidare so it has been converted to meter cubes per second Marbekadre. we are dividing it by thousand and by 60 so in order to, to convert minute into seconds we are dividing it by 60 so hence we are obtaining 0 0.0033 meter cubes per second we can express it simply in terms of exponent also uh, in terms of 10 power also so the speed of pump is 40 rpm so we know this 
basic details so with this we'll be able to find out the area of the pump given the diameter pi by 4 d square which will give 0 0.01767 meter square area of the cylinder we know the formula in order to find out the discharge for a single acting pump it is lan divided by 60 multiplying the value of la and n over 60 i'll be getting the value of theoretical discharge as 0 0.00353 meter cubes per second so coefficient of discharge is given by the ratio of actual discharge by theoretical discharge i know the value of actual and theoretical discharge so on dividing those i'll be obtaining the coefficient of discharge as 0.95 so it is unitless because the unit of Q get cancelled out in numerator as well as denominator. Percentage of slip can be expressed as the difference between the ratio of difference between the two discharges divided by the theoretical discharge. So I'll be able to obtain the percentage slip as 6.5%. So it is hardly a matter. So the percentage of slip is only 6.5%. So the next worked example is a double acting reciprocating pump. So here itself. we should separate out it is a double acting reciprocating pump so when we say double acting there is two deliveries two delivery stroke for one revolution for one revolution there is two delivery stroke having a piston area so it is directly given that area is 0.1 meter square so in the previous problem diameter was given here area is given as 0.1 meter square and stroke is 300 millimeters so l is given 300 millimeter the pump discharges 2.43 meter cubes per minute of water the discharge actual discharge is given 2.4 meter cubes per minute of water per minute at 45 rpm speed of the pump 45 rpm through a height of 10 meters the head is also given so monometric head so through a height of 10 meters water is being supplied calculate the slip of the pump and power required to drive the pump so we have to find out the slip slip na calculate maadadhe ki namge theoretical discharge ubeku actual discharge ubeku so theoretical discharge now find out maadbeku actual discharge na namge illi already kutti dare so theoretical discharge formula find out maadadhe ke since it is a double acting pump we have to multiply our lan divided by 60 formula with 2 so this 2 is because there is double double means two deliveries per one revolution so we are multiplying this equation by 2 we'll be able to obtain the theoretical discharge so then we can find out the slip so power required to drive the pump is given by the formula w into q into h so h is given 10 meters of water so after calculating q so we'll be able to find out what is the power required to drive the pump so the given are area of the cylinder 0.1 meter square length of the stroke 0.3 meters q actual is 2.4 meter cube per minute so dividing it by 60 will be obtaining 0 0.04 meter cubes per second speed of the pump is 45 rpm the head of what monometric head is 10 meters through which the pump has to supply the water so theoretical discharge is given by formula 2 lan by 60 2 is for double acting that is 2 deliveries per stroke for revolution so on multiplying two times the see on multiplying two along with this so we'll be able to obtain obtain the value of theoretical discharge l value stroke value 0.3 meters and the area value 0.1 meter square and multiplied by the speed so we'll be able to get the theoretical discharge 0 0.045 meter cube per second slip is given by the difference in theoretical and actual discharge actual discharge is given in the problem problem so theoretical discharge is 0 0.045 meter cubes per second on subtracting we'll be getting the slip as 0 0.005 meter cubes per second in terms of discharge so the power required to drive a reciprocating pump is given by formula p equal to w into q into h so w we know the specific weight of the water 9.81 multiplied by 1000 so 1000 has been avoided in order to get the power in terms of kilowatts so Q is 0 0.045. So the theoretical discharge obtains is 0 0.045 multiplied by the head of the water that is 10. So we are getting the power of the pump as 4.41 kilowatts. Power required to drive a pump is 4.5 uh, kilowatts. So thank you all uh, for your patience. And so you can uh, watch all these videos in our DTE Studio channel. Uh, can be browsed through our DTE website, dte.kr.nic.in. Uh, so any questions?